name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Stephen, the first Christian martyr. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Lord, we pray, that we may imitate what we worship, and so learn to love even our enemies. For we celebrate the heavenly birthday of a man who knew how to pray even for his persecutors. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called Synagogue of Freedmen, Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and people from Cilicia and Asia came forward and de debated with Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. When they heard this, they were infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your, Into your hands, hands, O Lord, Lord I, commend I commend my spirit. My spirit. Be my rock of refuge a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead me and guide me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. I will rejoice and be glad because of your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of men, for they will hand you over to courts, and scourge you in their synagogues, and you will be led before governors and kings for my sake, as a witness before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. 
It will be, you will be given at that moment what you are to say. For it will not be you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. But whoever endures to the end will be saved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas, everyone. And yesterday was Christmas Day, and sometimes um, people, uh, by mistake, um, starting December 26th, start greeting each other as belated Merry Christmas. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, the whole Christmas season would last until Epiphany, in fact, uh, technically, until the baptism of the Lord. So it's still okay to greet Merry Christmas until the baptism of the Lord. So Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm wearing red, of course, for two reasons. It's still Christmas. Maybe I should have put some, you know, green lights and other uh, uh, to make it even more Christmassy. But uh, also today is the feast of Saint Stephen. Saint Stephen, one of the seven deacons of the early church and considered as the proto-martyr or the first martyr of the Christian church. A martyr is someone, as we know, um, who professes their faith publicly and as a show of being a witness to their faith. It's not only someone, well, some people would die, would be killed because of their personal testimony and witnessing to their faith, but not necessarily dying, but someone who really publicly profess, someone who is clearly a witness of God, a witness of God's love. So Stephen was a martyr, not only someone who publicly professes faith, but who also died for the sake of his faith. Maybe it's kind of ironic for some why immediately uh, the day after Christmas, December 26th, we celebrate the martyrdom of a saint. You know, probably people will say, well, you're, you're practically killing the joy of Christmas, like move the feast to some, uh, some other dates. But I think it's very important uh, for us to understand that Christmas is the beginning of our salvation, the birth of our salvation, and that we were all saved not only by the birth of the Lord, but by his passion and death and resurrection. Life, eternal life for us, became possible not only because Christ was born, but that Christ was also, he also died on the cross and rose to life again. So today, when we celebrate this feast of St. Stephen, we are not only talking of his death, we are talking of his life, of how because of his faith he entered into eternal life, and how his life was really a proclamation of the life of Christ. And so the feast today is a challenge for all of us, Christians, followers of the Lord. How do we celebrate Christmas? What is the center of our celebration? Because our Christian faith is in fact, encouraging us and demanding us to really center our Christmas celebration on the most important, Christ. And that's exactly what Stephen did with his life. His life was centered on Christ, proclaiming Christ to others. And I hope this is exactly what we do this Christmas season. There are many people who, until today, are really prevented from celebrating Christmas. They would be persecuted if they would be seen publicly celebrating Christmas. And so for them, they quietly celebrate Christmas in, you know, in their hearts or in the privacy of their homes. But at least for many of us, we are able to celebrate Christmas publicly. Well, because of the pandemic, probably we will be prohibited from gathering uh, together as a family in big numbers. But we can still proclaim our faith by, you know, decorating our homes or our front yards. We can still, in a way, publicly profess that, yes, we are Christians. We are followers of Christ. That, yes, we celebrate the birth of the Lord. But I think Christmas celebration is more than that. And that's why the Feast of St. Stephen today is very important. To celebrate Christmas is really to proclaim Christ. To proclaim Christ. But how do we proclaim Christ? St. Stephen today shows us that 
to proclaim Christ is to be consistent with the faith and values that we believe in. The life of St. Stephen was really dictated and conditioned by his faith in the Lord. And so everything he did was really a proclamation of what Christ taught, the values and teachings of Christ. In fact, when he was killed, the words that came out from his lips were, Father, forgive them their sins. Do not take this against them. Forgive them. That is a tremendous expression of a real proclamation of love for God and love for others. A real proclamation of Christian faith. And so today, as we celebrate the Feast of St. Stephen, a day after Christmas, let us also challenge ourselves. Let us not proclaim Christ on Christmas simply by our Christmas decorations at home. Rather, let us proclaim Christ with our lives. What are the values that we cling to? What are the values that really defend and define our lives? What do we cling to? What are our choices and decisions? Are they based on the values of the gospel? Are they based on the teachings of the Lord? What do I do every day? And why do I do them every day? Are they directed by the teachings and values of the Lord? If they are, then we are really proclaiming Christ. We are really celebrating Christmas in the right way. To proclaim who Christ is by the lives we live every day. So again today, we pray for that gift of faith as St. Stephen had. A genuine Christian faith. So that every Christmas celebration, our focus is not simply on the merrymaking, not simply on the decorations, not simply on the joy of gathering together as a family and with friends, but rather it is an occasion for us to really proclaim who we are, our faith in Christ, that our lives are really dictated by the values that Christ taught, the values of the gospel, the values of the Lord, and all of that is centered in a relationship with Christ. Again, Merry Christmas, everyone. Our Father is one of grace and mercy. Let us now bring to him the prayers of this community and the whole world. And let the response be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Father and the Church, through the intercession of St. Stephen, may we be firm witnesses to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For government leaders, may the Lord help them lead with justice, mercy, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are sick, may God grant them the power of redemptive suffering and the fullness of his healing power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those gathered here and at home, and for all those we love, may Christ help us live as, courteous, as courageous disciples, speaking the truth and loving as he loves. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. On the occasion of her birthday, for Maria Clarita Igargo, say, May God bless and protect her and her family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, May God's mercy be upon them this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And today we pray in a very special way for those whom we enrolled our Christmas Novena Masses. And we also pray for Egbert C. Carpenter for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of us gathered today, for ourselves, for those who asked for prayers, those whom we promised to pray for, we keep praying for all your prayer intentions and prayer requests that you post on our social media account and YouTube, and also for the end to the pandemic, and for all the intentions that we hold dear in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Father of love and mercy, in your goodness you sent us your Son, whose birth we celebrate today. 
We ask that you hear and answer our prayers through Christ, O Lord. Blessed our Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed so be God Blessed our Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of divine work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the souls May these offerings of our devotion today be acceptable to you, we pray, O Lord, for they are prompted by the glorious commemoration of St. Stephen the Martyr, through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, O duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For in the feast of this all-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was east down, all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation, and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you as with joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring it to the fullest of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we marry to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. And everyone at home, we greet each other with the peace of Christ. Peace to everyone. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy, should anything under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be Let us recite our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. For the many mercies which surround us, we give thanks to you, O Lord, who save us through the nativity of your Son, and gladden us with the celebration of the blessed martyr Stephen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.